me today. I'm here to talk about my experience with kubectl and how Lens, a Kubernetes IDE, changed the way I interact with Kubernetes clusters every day. I'm Avinash Desiredi. I work for Marantis as a solutions architect and developer advocate. I'm responsible Bill for building uh, developer content for Lens community. I run Mirantis Labs to educate developers on cloud native topics and work with large enterprises to containerize applications, deploy Kubernetes environments, implement dev DevOps processes, and best practices, and many more. I started my Kubernetes journey with the creation of Pod using Nginx image on Minikube a cluster back in 2017 using kubectl. Over time, like many others who work with Kubernetes, I used kubectl extensively to deploy applications, inspect and manage cluster resources, debug pods, view pod logs, and perform many more operations. For the folks who are not familiar with kubectl, it is a command line utility to interact with Kubernetes cluster. It is extremely powerful, but has steep learning curve and many options make it complex for anyone to master or even to get started with it. The term complexity means different for each, each one of us. So let me break it down further. An object is created using a YAML definition and by using kubectl create command. As soon as we apply the YAML file on the cluster, we wanted to know if the resources are deployed successfully on the cluster. In order to uh, verify that, uh, we'll, we'll be using kubectl get pods or uh, uh, get and then they describe operations. And if we need to troubleshoot further, we'll be using exec and then the logs operation. And there are like several other commands that we will be using in order to troubleshoot. A user will not run these commands once or twice but many times just to see if the deployment is, is successful or if a specific object is created. So running these commands uh, in involves like use of CLI and using copy-paste uh, uh, copy paste several times in their terminal. Let's consider another scenario where a user wants to list all the parts to identify the reasons for, the, for, the fail for their failure. We have to run this command uh, command with several options. And it is not easy to remember or type without, uh, without referring to documentation or using a copy-paste option. This is where Lens comes into picture. Lens simplifies the way we work with Kubernetes and provides full situational awareness for everything we run in Kubernetes. It is a desktop application that connects to a cluster using kube config file. So it is not something that needs to be deployed on the server side. This is a client side application. I don't have to write kubectl get pods or deployments or services and provide additional options in order to sort or filter the output that is presented by kubectl. Errors and warnings are highlighted using color coded icons with relevant messages. So a user can focus exactly on them instead of trying to find out where the error was. Being on a customer facing role, I often switch between like multiple projects. At times, I don't work with Kubernetes cluster hands-on for few months. So it is not easy to remember all the command line options all the time. And it takes time to get up to speed. Lens takes away this burden, where I can do all necessary operations seamlessly without going through the documentation or relearn all the commands. So let's look at like some features of Lens Desktop. First one is like the multi-cluster management. I have not seen a single developer using only one cluster all the time. They switch between multiple clusters which can be uh, a local Minikube cluster, or dev environment, test environment, uh, or prod environment. Lens allows users to add multiple clusters and switch between them seamlessly. The built-in metrics and visualization allows, uh, allows a user to look at uh, the resource utilization, like CPU, memory, file system usage, 
number of parts seamlessly, uh, seamlessly in the lens desktop. The workload overview gives a quick, quick summary of what is in the cluster and their state. So one can focus on specific resources as needed. Context-aware terminal, this is my favorite feature. With context-aware terminal, user don't have to worry about obtaining compatible kubectl client binary from the internet all the time, or configure kubectl context because Lens does it all for you with, uh, with the context server terminal. The resource editor, the resource editor uh, is uh, an inbuilt YAML editor where we can create new resources or modify existing resources directly within, uh, within Lens. And the Helm chart management, uh, the Helm chart management gives ability for a user to browse through available Helm chart repositories and access them seamlessly without uh, the need for installing Helm CLI. These are some more features of Lens desktop, like quick access to resource description or quick access to pod logs and ability to quickly search for patterns. You, we can quickly access to the pod shell or using click of a button, we can port forward into diff port forward different services or get a summary of events that are uh, happening in the cluster or quickly access node shell. And Lens Spaces enables users to securely share the cluster with your colleague without the need to, cre uh, without the need to create cube config file. And there are many other features that are not covered here. Feel free to check them out at kslens.dev. Lens does not stop with standard Kubernetes operations or functionality. Lens also allows you to script or develop your own extensions with the Lens API, a functionality to accelerate de development workflows for all the technologies and services that integrate with Kubernetes. For example, by using the community extensions like resource map, we can visualize the relationship between different resources in the cluster. All these features helped me extensively as I switched between different KRS environments while working with various customers and developers, minimizing the need to go through extensive list of options in kubectl. It is open source and takes less than five minutes to get started with. Feel free to check them, uh, feel free to give it a try. Connect with the community and let me know your thoughts. I'm available in Slack, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thank you all for joining me and the Linux Foundation team for hosting me here. Thank you.